In this video, I'm interviewing Dave McClure at Step Conference right here in Dubai. He is a world famous Silicon Valley venture capitalist, former director of marketing at PayPal, and former fund manager for Facebook. His current fund, 500 Startups, manages $150 million worth of capital and is invested in 900 companies worldwide, including 22 right here in the Gulf. I caught up with him, as I mentioned, at the STEP conference and we talked about entrepreneurship, Periscope versus Meerkat, what to look for in investors, and a whole bunch of other things. If you're into business, technology, the web, or anything in that world, you need to check out this interview. Shout out to World Peace Designs for the cap. Hope you enjoy it. Dave McClure from 500 Startups. Welcome to Media Tech Social. How are you, mate? Hello, I'm pretty good. So, dude, I would really want to focus on two things. I mean, for those of the folks that are here today, you're probably the guy that everyone is buzzing around the most because, <laughs> be because of one thing. You really raise your standards. <laughs> yeah. Because of one thing, and rightly so, your your attitude, and certainly the attitude of a lot of uh, successful American investors, is there are no barriers. And today, certainly, you just came off stage and you completely just tore through uh, any misconceptions, preconceptions. And I feel a lot of that is to do with gusto. And I noticed that as a cultural difference from being here in the Middle East. Would you say that's a fair observation? And, and how far have Dubai got to come to have folks like you born here, living here, working here? Well, I, I think, you know, most, not to say there aren't any barriers, but most barriers are more of your own making and mental, not necessarily other places. Um, you know, there are certainly some challenges in access to capital and really getting started, but, uh, you know, it's cheaper than ever to get startups off the ground. There's more people online than ever before. Monetization's getting better. So I think there's a lot of positive aspects to doing startups. Um, but I think sometimes there's a tendency to repeat the negatives or repeat the you know, sort of roadblocks rather than like to accentuate the positives. And so I think focusing on, you know, a positive attitude in the ecosystem, and that means writing checks, feeling positive about doing startups, and really encouraging everybody else to be successful. You know, it's, it's sort of just a small mindset change, but it can really have big impact. Are you talking about access to smart capital? Well, not necessarily. I mean, smart capital is great, but capital is capital. I mean, I think what you really need is people to write small checks to help companies get off the ground. And in particular, I think, you know, checks in the sizes of 100,000 to maybe a million, potentially up to two million, are really critical sources of capital that are maybe more challenging to get a hold of. Um, but still, most of the roadblocks are nowhere near as big as the opportunities. And just kind of resetting your framework and realizing that you know, there's a lot of businesses to be built in the region and, you know, the potential for creating, uh, you know, really great opportunities in the next 10 years is dramatic. So on my point of smart capital, I know, I know a bunch of investors that have done quite well, raised some good rounds here in the region, but they feel that after a certain point, the traditional mindset of a traditional investor, which is where's my money, where's my return, and not having that long-term view of people like yourself and Peter Thiel is what eventually starts to creep in. So although everybody wants to be an entrepreneur now, and that's the modern day being in a rock band, anybody with a bit of money wants to be an investor, but after three months or six months, they start sweating and going, hang on, I need to become, I need my money back. Tell me about what you're doing to raise the caliber of investors in the region, because I know you're doing that in the region as well. Well, we're actually uh, just starting to teach a course with Stanford on angel and VC investing uh, coming up in May, and uh, that'll be kind of a two week course on early stage investing in tech, mostly focused around angel and VC models. Um, but I think the reality is just understanding that, you know, most things in tech fail, but a few things work very well. And so having a larger portfolio approach uh, and probably writing smaller checks. So instead of just betting on one or two startups a year, really trying to have a portfolio that's 10, 20, or possibly even 50 companies to really have wide, uh, wider access to success and you know, maybe to get lucky with uh, one or two investments that really do produce a significant return. And last year you smashed through about 18 or 20 investments, right? Uh, we've done about 20, maybe 22 in the region so far over the last two years. So I think we did close to 10 last year and hopefully do, we'll do 10 to 20 this year. What are your big observations from getting to that milestone? You know, I, I think there are still some challenges on payments and monetization. So that's one of the aspects we try and look at models, typically around e-commerce or SaaS, where there is, you know, a relatively straightforward way to make money. Uh, we kind of have to be aware of the cross-border issues in the region and, you know, what kind of businesses will work well across multiple country geographies. So you think this is going to be, this kind of region is going to be more about emerging platforms rather than fundamentally moving paradigm shifts like, like the Facebooks and the, the Instagrams? I'm not, I'm not saying there won't be big stories here, won't be massive, uh, you know, sort of breakthrough innovation, but I think we're looking more at incremental innovation and more at businesses that have, you know, pretty simple revenue models to go after. And there's lots of those businesses all over to go after. And as a final question, because I want to be respectful of your time, just help me out, because I don't really have anybody to talk to in this region about Meerkat and Periscope. Give me your two 
two cents as to, especially the day when uh, Meerkat announced their 12 million and then Periscope came out like an hour later. 14, I think, yeah. 14. Right. Um, you know, it's an interesting story. Obviously, uh, you know, a startup that's got a uh, pretty cool product and a lot of early enthusiasm and now, you know, some dollars behind them as well. Uh, versus kind of the other incumbent, which was acquired by Twitter. And, you know, you obviously have a lot of marketing muscle behind you if you've got Twitter pushing your product. So may, may I ask, what's what's bigger, marketing muscle in the traditional uh, war chest sense or the Ashton Kutcher Universal Music Group, Gary Vaynerchuk's of the world combined? Well, there's, there's a lot of really amazing investors behind Meerkat, uh, including, you know, Josh Elman and folks at Greylock. There's some great individual angels investors there. Um, but the real challenge is, you know, how much distribution can they generate on their own versus having a big company like Twitter pushing uh, the distribution. So usually having a better product will win, but in this case, having quite a bit of marketing distribution and a good enough product might also uh, be enough to win. All right, Wicked. Can you tell the folks uh, on MediaTek Social where they can get, uh, catch up with you online? Uh, I guess you can follow me on Twitter at Dave uh, McClure for really uninteresting uh, thoughts on the Internet. And uh, if you want to go check out our website or apply to uh, 500 Startups, then you can go to 500.co. Appreciate your time, man. Thank you. Take care.